All right, today we're going to talk about resistive forces and differential equations and how we use those to solve uh, resistive force problems. Now, any resistive force, just a force that acts opposite the direction of motion, common ones are friction and air resistance. Air resistance is a tricky one because the resistive force depends on the velocity. The faster you're going, the more air resistance there is. So let's see how we deal with that. So this would be a typical type of problem. We have a ball dropped from a height, and the drag force, which we're given, that's our resistive force, is BV, where B is some constant and V is the velocity. Now let's say we want to find what the terminal velocity of the ball is. So we have our little ball here, and we're going to draw our forces. Now gravity is acting down, and the drag force, BV, is acting upward. Now at terminal velocity, our net force is going to be zero, therefore our force of gravity and our drag force are going to be equal to each other. So we set those equal, substitute in what they are, and we can solve easily for the terminal velocity of the ball. But what if we don't want to find the terminal velocity? What if we want the velocity at any time along its path? Uh, initially, the drag force is going to start off being less than the gravitational force, and it's going to grow as the velocity increases until they're equal and you hit the terminal velocity. So what if we don't want to find the terminal velocity? We want to find the velocity as a function of time as this ball is falling. Initially, the uh, drag force is going to be less than the gravitational force, and as the ball speeds up, eventually they're going to be equal, and that's the terminal velocity we just saw. So we know that F net equals MA, and our net force is going to be the gravitational force minus the drag force, and we also need to replace the acceleration with dV dt. Here we have what's called a differential equation. There's lots of ways to solve differential equations. There's a whole class in college about it, but uh, we don't have to go into that much detail. So let's see how to solve this type of differential equation. First thing we want to do is get all of the terms with velocity in it on the same side. So here, that's what we have. Now we want to take that dV dt and we want to separate those. So we have dV on one side and dt on the other side. So it's kind of like multiplying both sides by dt. And then we're going to have to rearrange some things because it's not just a simple multiplication the way it is. Uh, so try the algebra. You should be able to get to here where we have dv on the left and dt on the right. Once we do that, let's do a little bit of simplifying to make it look nicer, and we end up with this for our equation. Now we're ready to take an integral. So we take our equation, we're going to integrate both sides. The velocity side we're going to integrate from 0 to whatever the velocity is at that point in time, and the time side we're going to integrate from 0 to whatever the time is at that point. So if we follow our rules for taking integrals, we end up with a natural log on the velocity side, and we end up with uh, a simple constant times our variable on the time side. Once we get here, we're going to exponentiate both sides, e to whatever each side is, and that's going to simplify things down with a little rearranging. Try it out, make sure you can do it, and you should end up with something like this. And that is our velocity as a function of time for any point along the ball's path. So that's how you solve a differential equation. It looks hard, but uh, just follow it step by step, and you'll be able to do it just fine. See you next time.